So I can't believe that we're at the end of this Genesis um, study and this video is obviously not going to be comprehensive on every single chapter. If you're looking for a specific Bible study on a specific chapter, I suggest that you go to that video. I'll have the entire playlist linked in the description box. This study more so is just an overview and it will serve as a way for me to see um, you know, which part of Genesis um, if I'm looking for something in particular. For example, if I want to look up the story of Isaac, I've broken down the book of Genesis into five sections. And so from these notes, I'll know the book of Isaac is Genesis 25 and 26. So this is basically what this overview is going to be. I'll have the entire Genesis study the Bible with me series linked in the description box. Let us dive right in. So the first section, Genesis chapters 1 through 11, just talks about the beginning, the beginning of creation. And God is so great. We don't know, you know, we think of things as very finite, but God is very different. He, you know, always was, he always existed. And that concept is really difficult for us to grasp as human beings. And so God always existed. So the beginning, you know, what does that even mean? <laughs> I can't comprehend that. When was the beginning if God always existed? But at any rate, God created the universe in six days and rested on the seventh. Now he is God. He does not need to rest, right? He, you know, he doesn't create the whole universe and it's just like, wow, I'm really tired. I need to take a break from, you know, running the universe. <laughs> he doesn't. Um, in fact, I think that that's, this is God's first way of showing us the Sabbath and that we need to remember to keep the Sabbath holy, it says in the Bible. And Sabbath is just a fancier way of saying a day of rest. Now, some religions observe it on a particular day, but uh, me personally, I like to make sure that I have one day out of the week, um, regardless of which day it is in particular, and make sure that I don't do any work on that day and just hang out. I need that. <laughs> we all need that. And so it's a really good example of resting. And the first two people that are created are Adam and Eve. They live in the Garden of Eden and they were told not to eat from the tree um, of knowledge. So God gave Adam and Eve everything, right? He gave them an entire garden. And instead of them looking at what God gave them, they looked at what they didn't have. And we need to be careful of that as well. We need to examine our blessings rather than our needs and what we want. So, you know, Eve was the first one to fall into temptation. And because of that, all women have been given in the Bible. It says that childbearing is now very painful for women, which of course, you know, if you've had a child, um, then you may have experienced that. But um, the Garden of Eden was a place that God provided for Adam and Eve to have everything and still it wasn't enough. So we need to make sure that we're not living in that space where, you know, God's blessing isn't enough for our lives. If you have a job, be grateful that you have that job. There's nothing wrong with wanting something more, but make sure that your priorities are right. Make sure that you're not constantly, you know, taking for granted the things that God has blessed you with, because imagine you didn't have a job and that's just an example. Um, so we need to really make sure that we are remaining grateful towards the things that God has provided for us. And the serpent questions Eve. And most importantly, he questioned what God said to Eve. And again, don't let Satan and also other people as good intentioned as they may be, um, deter you from what you have heard from God. So even with this channel, I did have, um, not a lot, but I did have some negative comments about it before from people who genuinely love me. And it wasn't that they wanted me to fail or do bad, but they just, they didn't hear from God. I did. And so if you hear from God and you know in your heart that God is telling you to do something, go for it and trust that. So Eve eats from the, she eats the fruit and then also Adam eats the fruit. And so man is forever forbidden from the garden. And that's the first sin. So sad. I remember vividly studying that and how sad it was. But, and Cain and Abel were the first offspring. And unfortunately, they were also the first murder. Well, Abel was the first murder. Cain was the oldest. Um, and he was jealous of his younger brother because his younger brother gave more than he did. And so the lineage of Jesus is actually through Seth. And some things in the Bible, um, you know, if you read the older sibling or the oldest is usually blessed more than the youngest. However, in this instance, Cain, you know, he could have had the lineage of Jesus in his um, line. 
However, because of his jealousy, he didn't. Instead, it was through Seth. And then Noah was given instruction to build an ark. And think about it this way. You know, Noah, they've never seen rain. And God told him to build an ark because rain will wipe the earth away. And it's hard to fathom. You know, if someone told you that God will do something that you've never seen before, of course you'd think that person may be a little bit crazy. So people probably thought Noah was out of his mind, building a boat, you know, doing the impossible. And we've actually been studying impossibilities, well, earlier this month more so, but God can do the impossible. And Noah had great faith to build an ark in the midst of a time where no one, you know, everyone turned against God. And it was so bad that God had to wipe the earth clean. I mean, that's, that's horrible. And um, after the, the flood, we of course learned that the rainbow represents God's promise of never again flooding the entire earth and wiping the earth clean of using water. So that was a really good example of faith. And then at the end of that, God, um, we learn about how God creates several languages that you know are still around today, and that was with the events of Babel. So Genesis 12 through 25, it's the story of Abraham. And it starts off with God making a covenant or a promise to Abraham that his descendants will inherit the, the land of Canaan and bless the entire earth with a great nation. Of course, that is Israel. And Abraham and Sarah were very old. Again, the impossibility. You know, I'm sure if they told somebody, God told us we'll have a baby, they would all laugh. <laughs> so they took matters into their own hands. They got tired of waiting for God after so many years. And Abraham had a baby with Sarah's handmaid, Hagar, and that baby's name was Ishmael. So I learned from that that we need to be careful to wait on God. And when we try to hurry things along and make things happen on our timeline instead of God's timeline, we can run into a lot of hurt as Abraham had to basically put Hagar and Ishmael out eventually further down the line um, because Sarah was upset and she didn't want anything to jeopardize Isaac's blessing, you know, down the road. So, you know, someone gets hurt one way or another and, you know, you just, it's so much better to just wait on God, wait on his timing. He knows the future. So why wouldn't you want the one who knows the future to um, plot it out the way that he knows is best for you? So that just comes along with trust and faith. So Abraham and Sarah waited 20 years for their promise and their child was Isaac. And let me tell you, I don't know if I can wait 20 years for a promise from God. And that's just being super honest. That was hard what they had to do. And I give them a lot of credit for that. Yes, Abraham did um, try to cut corners and have a baby with Hagar. But at the end of the day, that was still a long time to wait for <laughs> a promise. So I don't know. It's just, it just so goes to show, you know, how much faith Abraham and Sarah, I'm sure they gave up on that promise after a while. And then after waiting 20 years for the promise, God asked Isaac to be sacrificed. So again, I just feel like the story of Noah, the story of Abraham, and then Abraham again, great faith, men of great faith. Because he said, oh, yeah, you waited for this child and sacrifice him to me, you know? And that's something that I need to ask myself. Am I willing to give up things that God has given to me? You know, how much, how much importance do I place on certain things? And Another thing is Abraham knew God said that you will have many nations. Abraham knew God's promise to him and God cannot break a promise. So I'm sure Abraham was probably thinking, okay, anytime God, you know, when he's bringing Isaac up the hill to be sacrificed and Isaac even asked, you know, where's the sacrifice father? That was probably difficult for him. So yeah, just really great faith that they had. And then Isaac went on to marry Rebecca and Abraham and Sarah die. And then we move on to Genesis 25. 19 and 20 um, through 26 uh, 35 and that's the story of Isaac and again Isaac and Rebecca they wanted children but Rebecca could not she was barren but Rebecca was barren and she prayed so you know we should bring our needs to God and that's something that I overlook a lot and I think I've mentioned that before I may have a need but I think to myself well that's not important enough to God like he's running the world why are my needs important but it is God says over and over in the Bible to re bring your request to him and he wants you to pray to him and ask him for the things that we need and so uh, Rebecca prayed she prayed to God you know she wanted to have a baby 
and they ended up having twins, which were Esau and Jacob. And Esau was the older one, but they battled each other, even in the womb. When they were born, it said that Jacob was holding on to the heel of Esau. And God told Rachel that the younger, which was Jacob, would be served by the older, which was Esau. And the lineage of Jesus ended up, ended up being um, through Jacob, not Esau. And Esau gave up his birthright for some soup. Remember that? Don't give up what God has promised you and God's best for your life for something that is insignificant. And we do that all the time as humans. But keep your eye on the prize. Keep your eye on the bigger picture and not on the here and now. Sometimes we want to gratify the flesh so bad that we do what it is that we think we want, right? But God has something better for us. So keep that in mind and don't give up your best for something that is not worth it. In Genesis 27 through 37, we learn about Jacob and Esau, which was very interesting. These brothers, <laughs> Jacob tricks Esau, I'm sorry, Jacob tricks Isaac into giving him Esau's blessing and he turns and runs away from home to Haran. So his mom, Rebecca, she suggested to Jacob, you know, go in, you know, Esau's out hunting, go pretend to be Esau so that Jacob would bless you. Instead of Rebecca and Jacob remembering the promise that God gave, right? Because remember, God told Rebecca that Esau would serve Jacob. Instead of trusting that God will let it happen on their, on God's own time, they trick Isaac. And I don't think Jacob ever sees his mom again because he leaves home for a long time remember he went to Haran and he ended up with two wives and kids and he had to serve Laban remember that whole big dramatic part of <laughs> Jacob's life he ended up having you know 13 kids while he was there and, or even more than that you know because I know the Bible lists all of the sons and I'm sure he's had daughters besides Dinah Dinah was mentioned because of the event that happened in Shechem however you know Jacob ran away from home and we don't know if he saw his mom again and we don't even know how things would have played out had he had just trusted God instead of trying to lie and weasel his way into the promise. But at any rate, God gave Jacob a promise of protection while he was on his way to Haran and a lot happened there. So I can kind of understand why. And then when Jacob left Haran to return to Canaan, um, again, let us wait on God's timing for a blessing. Jacob left Haran with two wives, many children and goods. So. On his way back, he was nervous because he heard that Esau was going to encounter him on his way back. And he was scared. Remember, he hasn't seen Esau since he tricked him. But Esau was so gracious and he embraced Jacob. Um, and again, I remember at the end, um, I don't remember exactly, but I think Esau was saying to the extent of, you know, let's meet in another town and I'll go on ahead of you. And Jacob told him that he would catch up and he never did. He ended up going in another direction. So again, Jacob just... <laughs> making up all these stories and you know lies i don't know what's up with the trickery but that's jacob right and it's crazy that god will use jacob you know i can relate to jacob i'm not perfect i mess up all the time and in the bible it often says may the god of jacob and i used to wonder why why would god pick jacob if he was you know not the best example of faith and and doing what it is that we're supposed to do and not sinning, but I think that's the beautiful part. You know, God doesn't want us to be perfect. He just wants us to have a heart after him, which Jacob certainly did. Genesis 37 through 50, we learn about Joseph. Again, another dedicated person to the Lord. And he was Joseph the dreamer. God told him a dream that he would rule over many, including his families. And his brothers didn't like that. They were very jealous of him and they sold him into slavery. And, you know, just because they were jealous and they sold him into slavery, that doesn't mean that people can stop the promises of God no matter what they do to you. It doesn't matter what someone says, what someone does. They can't stop God. And that's powerful. You see that in Joseph's life. And he suffered greatly, but every time he was put into a different circumstance, he continued to praise the Lord. He continued to remain faithful and to serve and to do his best no matter what he was doing. And eventually he ended up second in command to Pharaoh. And he also prepared and brought Egypt and many nations surrounding Egypt through a seven year famine. That is incredible. Well, he did with, you know, through God, of course, he didn't do it on his own strength. And then to top it all off, he gracefully forgives his brothers who sold him into slavery and he gave them a place to live. And 
Jacob and Joseph were reunited. Um, and I think that's wonderful. His brothers even had worked there in Egypt and his whole family moved to Egypt. And Jacob blesses his sons and Joseph's two sons. And that's in Genesis 49, 28. And that is when the 12 tribes of Israel are declared and Joseph was buried in Egypt. And I said it in this video, now I even know why, you know, the 12 tribes ended up even in, in Egypt. Because remember, we will read eventually, um, pretty soon it seems, that we will read about how Moses helped, you know, guide the Israelites out of Egypt. And so they ended up in Egypt because Joseph was there and then the 12 tribes went to Egypt because those were his brothers and that's how the 12 tribes became established and that's how they ended up in Egypt. So I think it's really cool that we also get some historical context from studying the Bible as well. And on the next page, I'll zoom out. So I hope you can see this okay, but I basically wrote the lineage from Adam all the way to Abram. So it was Adam, Cain, Abel, and then Seth. And then from Seth, we go down to Noah, and then we go down to Abram, whose name was changed to Abraham. And then we have the lineage of Abraham here through Sarah and Isaac, and of course, Jacob, who is also known as Israel. And it's so cool because when I was reading the story of Jacob, I just assumed that Rachel and Joseph or Benjamin would be the ones that the lineage of Jesus would come out of. Um, and you know, it's crazy because the one who man favors, right? Jacob loved Rachel more. It's not always the one who, you know, necessarily God sees favor with. I mean, not that God didn't favor Rachel, certainly. I mean, she definitely had a part in the promised land and the promised nation of Israel. But God saw Leah's pain and it said, you know, when she had Judah, if you go back and read, she was having children to make Jacob happy. Then when she had Judah, she dedicated him to the Lord. And it was through Judah's line. And even if you go back and read about Judah, even him, you know, he's not the most upstanding person. But again, I love that, you know, the Bible shows that God doesn't always choose the perfect, you know, people. He doesn't. He chooses people that love him. And so Judah was one of the brothers that, you know, threw his brother into slavery as well. So let's not forget that. <laughs> but at any rate, Judah had um, sons that ended up in the lineage of Jesus. And we recently did a Bible study on the book of Ruth for Girl Boss. If you missed it, I'd suggest that you go check it out. But I did include in here Boaz and Ruth. And, you know, they were also included in this lineage. So really cool. Another thing, one last thing that I did want to mention is I was a little confused about the 12 tribes of Israel because I thought to myself, well, this is 14 people. How is it 12 tribes if it's supposed to be, you know, if it's 14 people? And I went online and I did some research and I only found, um, I found one source that kind of helped me figure it out a little bit more. And this was the Britannica online. And I'll read it to you. It says, Jacob's first wife, Leah, bore him six sons, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, and Zebulun. Each was the father of a tribe. Though Levi's descendants, among who were Moses and Aaron, and the priests and temple functionaries were dispersed among the other tribes and received no tribal land of their own. Two other tribes, Gad and Asher, were named after sons born to Jacob and Zilpah, Leah's maidservant. Two additional tribes, Dan and Naphtali, were named after sons of Jacob, born of Billah, the maidservant of Rachel, Jacob's second wife. Rachel bore Jacob two sons, Joseph and Benjamin. The tribe of Benjamin provided Israel with its first king, Saul, and was later assimilated into the tribe of Judah. While no tribe bore the name of Joseph, two tribes were named after Joseph's sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. So I hope that explains it. So Joseph, there was no tribe of Joseph, um, but instead there were two tribes, which was a Manasseh and Ephraim and the Benjamin, the tribe of Benjamin assimilated and eventually became the tribe of Judah. So I hope that explains things. So basically the 12 tribes are Manasseh, Ephraim, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, Gad, Asher, Dan, and Naphtali. And then the lineage of Jesus is through the tribe of Judah. So really interesting and cool things here. At least I think so. <laughs> but let me know if you learned anything from this in overview. I really enjoyed creating it. I'm glad that I have it as a point of reference. 
I'm so glad if any of you have followed along or even if you joined, you know, not from the beginning, that's okay too. I feel like everyone who does the Genesis Friday Bible studies, we're kind of like a little community and it's really special to me. I mean, this everyone on the channel is special to me, but um, more so the Friday series. So I just want to say thank you so much for following along with me. You guys are all amazing. I pray for you quite often. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Like this video if you liked it. It helps for other people to find my videos. I post a new Bible study video every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I can't wait to study the Bible with you again. Bye.